J Jerry McGinnis, uh, who, who is uh, a, a, a legend and a hero of mine in, in the community, uh, endowed this with his family, this competition. Uh, uh, 25 years ago, it was a professorship. It became a competition. And uh, I have to live up to my reputation with Jerry. He said, Dave makes the trains run on time. So if I seem a little bit rude, I'm not trying to be rude. But if we don't stay on time, this will drag on forever. So we're going to keep it on time. Uh, there are two tracks. There's an undergraduate track and a graduate track. Uh, at the undergraduate level, we have four finalists. Um, we had 80 teams compete uh, totally in the McGinnis Venture Competition. We boiled it down to 16. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, and uh, today, you'll see four undergraduate teams that, that emerged into the finals. Two of those winners will go on to the CMU Venture Challenge, which is hosted by the Undergraduate Entrepreneurship Association here at the Sports Center this Saturday with teams from across the country. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, our next team, uh, who to thunk? Carnegie Mellon and AI companies? Really? This company uh, is a sure a Surefy, uh, and they're using AI to uh, disrupt the mortgage industry. So with the Surefy team, come up. All right. In front of that camera. As a mortgage underwriter, my day starts with this beautiful loan management software. Okay, maybe it's not that beautiful, but today I'll be processing one loan for you guys, and I'll work with dozens of my clients' financial documents, sort them by hand, and within these bank statements in particular, often scanned with really bad quality, figure out what these numbers even are, extract them, consolidate them, put them into several spreadsheets, take out the figures line by line, figure by figure, put them in, compare them with our criteria, come up with some calculations, and if our client works with some contracts, making sure that these contracts are also aligned with the documents that we're looking at, that there's nothing fraudulent, and okay, that was a lot. But what you just saw was less than 10% of a standard underwriter's workflow that they do for over 80% of their day. My name is Alex. My name is Andrew. And with Assurify over the past year, we spent a lot of time working hand in hand months with underwriters and these lower middle market mortgage firm underwriters and lenders to identify this as a huge bottleneck in the industry. In fact, if there was a solution that could, for example, 3x the loans process per underwriter, what this means is a reduction in costs of up to 40% and a willingness to pay of over $16,000 per month. All of these mortgage firms that we've spoken to have been looking for a solution, but they haven't settled on anything yet. Why might this be the case? The core reason is that existing solutions are really high in financial costs and technical support retirements. And we're working with confidential information within the mortgage industry. This means a lot of concerns with the AI support and working with regulations and making sure that things don't go wrong. So what do these firms do? They rely on what they know best, manual work. And so what we've realized is that um, these firms create a niche in the market in the sense that they want something that can automate things, but they want a solution that they know how to implement and they know works behind the scenes that they can trust a business model that is technically accessible. And Assurify tries to tackle these by offering a free pronged business model. First, we draw users in with our standalone services, upgrade them to a multi-tiered SaaS subscription, and finally offer a tier that contains support and customization. I'll go through all of these in detail. First, we offer individual features as our basic standalone service plan, which aims to be the most technically accessible product on the market. This is because it's regulation compliant, easy to use, and affordable. Next, I'll uh, jump into a quick demo of our core offering, a SaaS, and I want to I want you guys to kind of contrast this with what Alex presented at the start. Uh, can you uh, All right. Um, I can just walk you through. Uh, what you would be seeing here. This is supposed to be a video here, but essentially we're going through the process of processing documents automatically with a single click. Then what you see here as the thumbnail is we're giving warnings for 
uh, detected fraud. As you can see here, we've changed the font here, and we do this with 99% accuracy. After this, we're extracting these figures into kind of like a tabular spreadsheet. And finally, we're using those numbers and computing some metrics and warnings for you to come to a final decision. This, is, this makes the process six times faster, and we even offer a chatbot for you to get insights into our workflow. And finally, touch, adding on to what you just saw is our uh, top tier offering, which allows you to fully customize every part of that workflow. Yeah, so thanks, Andrew. And hope your imaginators will, your imagination was able to think about what our product might look like. But regarding our current competitor landscape, so most competition right now is crowded in this really high automation AI space, but it's really not technically accessible in the sense that most solutions are very API built. They're built on these backend solutions that require entire IT teams to develop and, and create. And so what that means is that current market providers like Adobe and Byte, which are these really manual things, but easy to use are what our clients end up using. And so we create a niche for Sureify where we're really highly technical accessible, which a product that Andrew showed you is really easy to use, but we're medium and high in terms of our automation because our AI works in hand with our humans. So looking at our market, our total addressable market is huge. It's the entire mortgage services industry in America. And we want to focus specifically on the market within Western Pennsylvania and Orange County based firms that we're addressing right now. So what does the future look like for us? Well, within the first, within the next year, um, we want to look at um, implementing for our current five alpha clients and rolling out our core software offerings. Within the next three years, we, we want to offer- We have to oh. stop right there. But thank you. We'll be able to maybe get somebody to ask that question. Oh. We can <laughs> turn it over to the judges. Yes. Yeah. Hey. hey team, um, uh, could you uh, go to the last, next slide? Can you tell us a little bit about your uh, business roadmap? Thank you so much. Um, so within this next year, we want to implement, we currently have five alpha clients that we're rolling out our basic model. So our business plan is threefold. We want to finish out our core software offerings, which is the demo that we were going to show you. And then within three years, we want to build out our other two facets. So that's our standalone services to make it easy for firms to try out individual features. And then also our like builder, which is our premium offering. At this point, we think we can market aggressively, reaching 500 clients within three years and break even financially. And in the future, we think we have a few opportunities. First, remember that beautiful software I showed you in the beginning. We think we can optimize that with our AI and also enter other related industries. So you mentioned uh, focusing on small and medium-sized mortgage lenders. Could you give us some context on you know approximate headcount or revenue for those types of organizations? Yeah, for sure. So I think the headcount, for example, would be like, five to six underwriters, and then five to six salespeople within a small like 10, 15, 20 person firm. Uh, in terms of revenue, we would think like within, you know, a few million dollars per year in terms of top line. Um, and that's sort of the main niche is these smaller lenders that, you know, target these people who can't get these loans from big bank lenders such as Chase and to resort to these community-based partners. Um, could you walk us through, maybe this was in your video, uh, you know, the... Um... The flow, the workflow with your system versus all the manual and cumbersome paperwork. Sure. So you want us to kind of work. Uh, could you try to exit, like try to play the video? Yeah. I think it's, it might have been blocked on external media. I think you enable and try to, sure, I'll just go for this. Okay. So basically, remember Alex was telling the sort, we did the sort, and now we're detecting. Uh, these uh, fraudulent warnings. And basically we're making the process much smoother. These show up, I could even see this in my sleep, right? And we do this at 99% accuracy. Moving on, we're extracting these figures into this kind of table form. And we can verify these at a click of a button. And then moving on from that, we're basically having these calculations that we've calculated out for you to make your final decision. So you've mentioned um, you've been able to extract these numbers with 99% accuracy. Given the uh, given the relative well uh, importance for there to be little to no discrepancy in a lot of these fields, how have you addressed the 1%? Sure. Um, I'll actually clarify. When I said 99% accuracy, I was implying about the false negative rates for our fraud detection. So basically, we are basically guaranteeing with, uh, I guess, our research and our testing that we will basically never miss any uh, false, uh, like we will never have a document slip for cracks. For our uh, extraction, basically 
uh, I guess it's in the video, but beside every figure, we have a confidence level for each figure. And it's like a green or yellow dot here because I guess we're confident about everything here. And you can verify with a single click um, and we'll map it to the figure in the PDF viewer. And you can just verify it automatically if we're not too confident. Oops. How are you addressing? How are you, uh, I, I read in your business plan, addressing security, right? Because compliance, SOC 2, it's a really important big deal based on the kind of data that you will be dealing with. Um, and have you thought about trying a, a proof of concept with some small local um, entity first to sure. work through some of those kinks? Yeah, um, so I can start with the... Uh... The, the entity, sorry. So we currently have one client that we're working with um, throughout this main thing as our core alpha client. And we have four other ones that are interested. And with this one, they've had a lot of concerns within um, first making sure that the software is locked. So Andrew, do you want to talk about the... Sure. Um, I'll actually add on to that. We, uh, for our uh, SaaS upgrade, we do offer on-prem deployment of our SaaS service. So if customers are worried about like, I guess, the cloud in that sense, we do offer that as an option, but addressing the security part, uh, can you go back a few slides? Or, uh, so our standalone service is designed to offer like, okay, I'll, I won't get into technicals, but it's fully homomorphic encryption. Basically on the client side, it's encrypted. It sends the data to us and we operate on the encrypted data without ever having to decrypt the data. And under certain privacy laws, like the CF CFIPA and GDPR, this counts as pseudo, pseudo anonymization. So there are less stringent regulatory requirements with regards to these. So All that's right. why we're, we're going to have to stop right there. So thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Congratulations.